We had a shinobi in early Shippuden that was feared across all five nations. A ninja with great combat experience and intellect who knew how to exploit the opponent's weaknesses like no other. A shinobi who knew all five nature transformations and was famous for his jutsu variety. This shinobi was Kakashi Hatake. There was also a dude called Kakuzu who really liked money as well. But seriously, what is up with Kakuzu Wang? It's rampant. Some people think he is the strongest Akatsuki. Like, no? He's not even close? I really don't know where people get this idea that Kakuzu is like a demigod. Don't get me wrong, I like the character and he's not weak. He's much more powerful than the average ninja, I would say he's even low Kage level. But he's not even close to be on the top of the Akatsuki. Let's take a look at Kakuzu's feats and gauge his strength and find out how powerful he actually is. First, I have to address the big elephant in the room. Kakuzu's legendary fight with Hashirama, or should I say fever dream? He mentions that he fought Hashirama to Kakashi and Team Asuma mostly to scare them and hype himself up, but him saying that is the most worthless statement in the history of statements. If you go by that logic, this dude right here also fought Madara. And I can imagine him telling his grandkids in the future, Oh yes, I fought Madara Uchiha a long time ago. He just didn't really tell them how the fight ended. Kakuzu is the same. He has absolutely no chance in hell to scratch Hashirama. I mean, look at this thing. Look at this. There's just no way. This Hashirama right here would fold Kakuzu in half, so just forget about that stupid statement. It's just self-wank. It's garbage. And also, don't forget to subscribe if you like videos like this. It takes two seconds. Come on, don't be lazy. So let's discuss his actual feats. The first thing a lot of people bring up when discussing Kakuzu's strength is that he tanked a point-blank Bijudama from the two tails. However, these people are either colorblind or compulsive liars because that is very clearly not a Bijudama. You see, Bijudamas have a very characteristic visual. They're dark, pitch black in the manga actually. This thing right here is not dark, it's actually very bright. There is a lot of white here, something we don't see in any Bijudama. This is very clearly a fireball. It's even clearer in the anime because we see the actual orange-yellow fire color. So no, Kakuzu didn't tank a point-blank Bijudama, he tanked a fireball. A powerful fireball, but a fireball nonetheless, and you know fire never kills or hurts anyone in the anime, so it's basically worthless. Also, the two tails is not that big of a deal. People bring up the fact that Kakuzu wasn't really hurt after fighting the two tails as a phenomenal feat of durability and strength, but this is really pushing it. The two tails is not that powerful, and it's very much implied that Hidan did most of the work in that fight anyway. If you go by that logic, Kid Naruto defeated the one tail in part one, and I don't think the two tails would be that much more powerful than the one tail. So sure, Kakuzu has the power to face a low tier Biju, but so do all the Akatsuki, the Sanin, the powerful Konoha Jonins like Kakashi and Guy, who later on were fighting multiple tail beasts at once. So that's not a big deal at all. His next fight was against those fodder monks. I mean, who even cares about them? The chief monk was less powerful than Asuma, seeing that his bounty was 5 million yen lower than Asuma's. And Asuma got defeated by Hidan, arguably the weakest Akatsuki member. In that fight, Kakuzu punches pretty hard, but Shikamaru manages to dodge, so sure, Kakuzu can be physically strong, but he is not exactly a speedster, but we'll get deeper into that later. Then comes the most prominent fight he is in, Kakashi and Shikamaru versus Hidan and Kakuzu. And that was a pretty fair 2v2 fight, I'm not really counting these two here because they were actually a hindrance in the fight. But how does Kakuzu fare? Well, he's caught off guard by Shikamaru and if it wasn't for his trick with a hand, they would have lost there. 
But I have to say, Cox's abilities are really damn cool. Those weird wires and the way he detaches parts of his body is just awesome. And his powers are very creative as well. I wish these types of creative powers were used in Boruto instead of just absorbing jutsu every single time, but I digress. Kakuzu is able to counter Shikamaru's plan, saying that he has about a hundred years of battle experience. He then tanks Choji's fat ball attack, which is not exactly impressive, but it's something. But Kakashi is then able to sneak up on him and completely obliterate his Earth-style defensive shell, and yet lightning is strong and stone, but Kakuzu didn't even see that coming at all. His stone defense is probably very useful against more basic attacks like explosions and taijutsu, but a more powerful attack like Chidori, Rasengan, or well, the Rasen Shuriken will essentially destroy the defense completely. Kakuzu then releases his hearts and has a pretty evenly matched fight against Kakashi. He definitely had the edge against Kakashi when the fight was interrupted and Kakashi was almost beaten. However, Kakashi put up a really good fight and said that he would have used his Mangekyo had Naruto and the squad not arrived in time. And I believe that with the Mangekyo, Kakashi would have won because Kamui is just broken. Which takes me to my next point, how Kakuzu was actually defeated. When Kakuzu fuses up with the fire and wind hearts to use their powers combined, that was a power up. Sure, he had lost two hearts by then, but that final form alone was more powerful than the form he was using to fight against Kakashi with the independent hearts. He also was able to use the wires in a greater variety of ways and with more power as well. And and we can clearly see that's the case when he just bangs all those arms out and uses them to attack and then he's defeated by base Naruto. Actually it's worse, he gets deceived and blitzed by base Naruto. Twice. Naruto uses his shadow clones to distract Kakuzu and then hits him with the Rasen Shuriken at melee. Twice. The thing is, Naruto uses like three shadow clones to distract Kakuzu, just three shadow clones and that's enough to trick Kakuzu twice. You see Naruto technically hit Kakuzu twice with the Rasen Shuriken, it's just that in the first time it fizzled out because Naruto wasn't really used to the Jutsu yet. Essentially, a Genin manages to fool Kakuzu twice in a time span of about two minutes and manages to blitz Kakuzu twice in that same time span. Sure, after the first Rasen Shuriken fails, Kakashi and Yamato had to go and rescue Naruto, and Yamato's wood style is actually very effective against Kakuzu, making him retreat. But still, Naruto gets up and proceeds to defeat Kakuzu somewhat casually. Also, Naruto entered that fight very fatigued because he had been training to develop the Rasen Shuriken for about three weeks non-stop. You could argue Naruto was aimed by the QB because he had the QB pupils when fighting Kakuzu, but it was a very low amp, his whiskers were not pronounced and his eyes were not even red, it was by far the lowest QB amp we've ever seen. Lower than the one he used against Neji because we don't see any QB chakra oozing out of his body. Also, early shipping and base Naruto wasn't exactly strong. He got shit stomped by Sasuke and he never showed any impressive speed feats. Sure, then Naruto developed a pretty strong jutsu, but he wasn't exactly fast and he had to hit that in melee. And he blitzed Kakuzu twice. In short, Kakuzu with two fused hearts was defeated twice by early Shippuden fatigued base Naruto. And he didn't get one shot by Naruto because the first Rasen Shuriken whiffed. That's the only reason. Can you honestly see any other people in the Akatsuki performing so badly against that version of Naruto? I can only really think of Hidan and Zetsu to be honest. Sure, Kakuzu had been fighting Kakashi and Team Asma for a while, but he wasn't training for three weeks to develop an S-class jutsu that requires a monumental amount of chakra. For crying out loud, Conan would probably stomp that Naruto. And some people claim Kakuzu can beat pain. It's absolutely delusional. But that's not all. Kakuzu returns in the war arc. And how does he do there? He loses to Tenten. He is fodderized by Tintin, the fodderest of all fodders. You're telling me that the guy who got destroyed by Tintin would beat Pain? 
But Tangent had the Sage of Six Path tools. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. It's freaking Tenten. She has three fights the entire series. One against Tamari that she gets no diffed off screen in the manga. One against a clone of herself which she has to win. I mean, it's a fight against Tenten, so Tenten is going to win eventually. And then the fight against Kakuzu. And she stomps Kakuzu. There's just no excuse. I don't care if Tenten was using freaking Excalibur to fight Kakuzu. He lost to Tenten. You cannot lose to her and say you can beat people like Pain, Jiraiya, Itachi, you name it. There's no way. Kakuzu is not that strong. Subscribe to this channel if you enjoy this type of content. Also, like the video and watch this video right here for more content like this. Comment down below, what do you think about Kakuzu? Am I right? Am I wrong? Thanks for watching.